Private channels in Microsoft Teams are finally out. Let's dive right in and see how they work. Hi, I'm Matt Wade, and today we're talking about the most requested feature ever for Microsoft Teams, private channels. Private channels are now officially available to all Teams users on all commercial and education clouds. That means no GCC, no government cloud availability, sorry. But private channels are like any other channel in Microsoft Teams, except the channel conversations and files that come with that channel are gonna have different permissions from the rest of the team. So this feature is a really big deal to a lot of people and a lot of Teams users out there. It's been a popular request for a few reasons. First, there's a lot of use cases for when a channel needs to be protected from the rest of the team. For example, having a management or a finance group, you know, not a separate team, but you just want it as a separate channel within the same team. Second up, uh, I think SharePoint users moving to Teams kind of expect a Teams version of the whole object level permissions that we've expected in SharePoint. So since we've had that feature before, we kind of expect to have it uh, continuously. And then third, frankly, Slack, which is Teams' probably biggest competitor in the field right now when it comes to uh, chat-based communication, collaboration tools for the enterprise, um, Slack offers this. So the fact that uh, Teams can't do it, I think that's one other reason why a lot of people expect Microsoft Teams to do it. So first up, I'm gonna cover some very high level but key points to be familiar with when it comes to private channels. Uh, then a bit later, I'll dive into the nitty gritty of each of the areas uh, for private channel management, files, conversations, all that stuff. Uh, if it's not covered here in the highlights, I'm most likely covering it later in the video, so do stick around. So first up, let's talk about permissions. Uh, first thing to note here is that private channels can be disabled at the tenant or the team's level. So you don't actually have to necessarily roll it out if you don't want it right now. Um, but next up, Private channels have their own owners, okay? So team owners are not necessarily private channel owners, and team owners that are not private channel owners cannot access the private channel. Third, private channel members must be a member of the team to be a member of the private channel. So you have to be a subset of the team. And then external guests are supported. They can be members of the private channel, but they may not be a private channel owner. Next up, let's talk about files. This is probably where some of the bigger um, confusions will arise and probably some of the more surprises as to how this thing works. First off, files are stored in a separate private channel specific SharePoint site collection. Okay, it's not part of the uh, SharePoint site that is used for the overall team that the private channel is part of. Uh, and permissions to the SharePoint site have to be managed in teams only for the most part, a little bit of an asterisk on that. We'll talk about that later. Then a few integrations. Private channels do support tabs and connectors, so that's really good news. Private channels have their own email address, just like any other channel. I think that is one of the gem features of Microsoft Teams, being able to forward an email to Teams so you can discuss it internally in Teams. And then finally, when you come to a consensus, go back to email, do your reply all, and do whatever you have to do. One thing that um, private channels don't do, okay, they don't support basically anything in the App Store. So bots, apps, that includes Microsoft Planner, uh, keep in mind doesn't support the wiki, and it doesn't support scheduled channel meetings, just so you know. Okay, so let's talk about some uh, general uh, settings here with private channels, and we'll jump into each one line by line. So first off, some general private channel settings. Private channels have their own settings separate from the team. So for example, the ability to at mention a channel can be disabled in the team, but it may be allowed in the private channel. Good to know. Creating a private channel. When you create a private channel, you just have to click that create channel option in your team. When you create the private channel, you are automatically made the private channel owner. And private channels can only be created. You cannot convert an existing channel into a private channel. Um, I don't know if that's a feature that's gonna come in the future, but I know that there's gonna be a lot of um, disappointed folks out there who would love to have existing setups be turned into private channels, but that's not something that's currently supported. You can limit the creation of private channels to just team owners. So if you go to the ellipsis next to the team name, manage team settings, and then allow members to create private channels, uh, note that this is distinct from the allow creating and updating standard channels option, which means private channel creation is treated separately from regular channels. Private channel names can be changed just like any other channel. Um, for permission modifications, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Private channels can be deleted just like any other channel, but one major difference is the SharePoint site storing the files gets deleted as well. You can restore a private channel the same way that you restore any other channel within Teams, at least as long as it's within the restoration period. Uh, the SharePoint site associated with that private channel is gonna get restored as well. 
Okay, so let's talk about permissions a bit. This is really where uh, you know the bread and butter comes in. The whole point of this is to provide permissions only to certain people as opposed to the rest of the team. So let's talk about a little bit of what private channel owners can do. So when you create a private channel, you become the owner of that private channel, even if you're not the owner of the team, okay? You can add owners to the private channel, but they must be members of the team, uh, of the parent team first. All owners of the private channel are also at least members of the team, always. It's possible for a private channel to go ownerless, take note, uh, say like when people leave the private channel. Uh, in this case, Teams chooses a member from the private channel to be auto-promoted as the owner. Uh, that being said, I have not seen any documentation on how it picks that person. So if you have a large private channel, that may have an impact on uh, what happens. Now let's talk about team owner rights because uh, the difference between the private channel owner and the team owner, private channel owner actually still has some serious power that the team owner doesn't necessarily have. So while owners of the private channel need not be owners of the team, at least based on the default settings, uh, team owners can see the name and description of all private channels in their team. They also have the ability to delete private channels. However, team owners have no access to conversations, no access to files, or any other features of the private channel itself unless they're made a member or an owner of the private channel. So basically the team owner is only able to see the metadata about the channel itself. So let's talk about private channel members. Um, private channel owners can add and remove members just like any other channel, so no difference there. However, to be a member of the private channel, the user must be at least a member of the team first. Okay, so all members of the private channel are also, at, uh, are also members or owners of the team. And if a user uh, leaves or is removed from the team, they're consequently removed from the private channel. Okay, and that brings us to external guests. Pleasantly surprising is that external guest access is supported within private channels. So you can add an external guest just like you would with any other channel. Um, the guest must also be a member of the team first, just like any of the other private channel members. Um, but there's an important implication here. If you're looking to invite guests to a private channel to share only certain information with them and not the rest of the team, you can't do that. So if you were looking to have private channels, say for each contractor that you have for a project and you have one team uh, project, project team, um, and you wanted to keep access limited for conversations and files for you know um, contractor A, contractor B, contractor C, you can't actually do that. Uh, so I think that's kind of a, a minor thing that some people might run into. Okay, now let's get into the details of how files work. All right, so a little overview. So as with any Teams channel, you're gonna want a central place to keep your files, and right, that will be the associated files tab in that private channel. But unlike other Teams channels, this tab in a private channel doesn't point to a similarly named folder in the documents library in the Teams dedicated SharePoint site, right? Because every team gets a SharePoint site in the background, and you get to see the default documents library in each um, channel, regular channel in that team, has a, uh, a folder in that documents library. No, instead, each private channel gets its own SharePoint site collection. If you don't know what a site collection is, it's basically a top level SharePoint site. Um, it's a term that IT folks would generally use. But this site type appears to be unique and it's not a typical team or communication site that you would find in SharePoint. Uh, it has no homepage. In fact, it has no pages at all. Uh, it appears to exist solely for the use of the documents library, which displays in the private channel uh, files tab. And you have the ability to create other libraries in that SharePoint site if you want to, but uh, it has to be file libraries. Looks like pages aren't supported. So this is one of the important points about private channels. This site has its own existence, is essentially a slave to Microsoft Teams, and has zero connection to the parent team site. It's not a subsite to the parent site. It is a disparate entity that requires its own responsible owner. When it comes to permissions for the site, do not touch, or at least you can kind of touch. But anything related to the site owners and site members uh, in the group is off limits because those are coupled with the team's members and uh, owners. So any changes you make to the uh, site owner or members group will quickly be overwritten and uh, return back to whatever the team's uh, owner slash member groups are for that private channel. Microsoft is not kidding when they say tight coupling in their documentation. You can feel free to make changes to the visitor group and create any other SharePoint security groups for specific permissions if you'd like in the SharePoint site. That's up to you. Uh, however, just beware because this can become really complex and difficult to manage very quickly. And sort of, uh, you know, the whole point of Teams originally was to make things simple, but now we're making it much more complex by bringing more of these object level permissions that we uh, used to complain so much about in SharePoint back in the day. Now let's talk a little bit about SharePoint administration. For those of you with access to the SharePoint admin portal, you're gonna note that these new sites don't show up there. 
Okay. Apparently that's by design uh, in an effort to keep the list of site collections from being littered by all the private channel site collections, but just know that they are or can be there. You just can't see them. Um, no word yet on if it's going to be something that uh, it will be visible in the future. Uh, kind of brings back bad memories of when um, you know Teams and other Office 365 group sites uh, never showed up in the admin center. You had to run PowerShell to get them. But even right now, there's no PowerShell command that will actually bring them up, apparently. So the last topic, a little bit niche, uh, is uh, for those of you concerned about Azure Information Protection and Data Loss Prevention, uh, DLP and AIP, uh, how they work. Uh, this is as much as I know about this. So private channel conversations and files are going to be classified the same as the team. Okay, so this appears to be one of the few places where files in a private channel are coupled with the files in the team, even though the sites are still different. So that was Azure Information Protection. For DLP in conversations, it's actually inherited from the, the parent team. Okay, so you can't change that. And DLP in the files is separate from DLP in the parent team. So DLP works differently depending on whether you're talking about conversations or whether you're talking about files, okay? So that's the overview of how private channels work in Microsoft Teams. The biggest takeaway here for you should be governance, okay? You need to have a strong system in place for uh, if, when, and how people in the organization use private channels. Um, they really shouldn't be using private channels willy-nilly. It needs to be a strategic decision and somebody with real ownership needs to be the private channel owner. Preferably you should have two or three. So if somebody you know, wins the lottery and leaves the company the next day, it's not left for teams to decide who gets to be the private channel owner. So I wish you good luck on your new private channel endeavor. And uh, let us know in the comments how you feel about this new feature. I know a lot of people have been waiting for it for a long time. Um, I'm kind of curious to know if this is exactly how you thought it would be rolled out or how the features work. So, you know, leave comments definitely down in the, uh, the comments section. And uh, feel free to follow us. You can follow uh, the organization here at Jump2365 on Twitter. And you can follow me personally at that Matt Wade. Have fun.